Lubu has landed in Rise of Kingdoms. We've got a new bundle for that, and Diao Chan's bundle is here, but there's more, my friends. We've got a heartwarming Thanksgiving bundle, too. Stick around for this video as we evaluate all of the new bundles that have just landed and whether or not they are worth it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming. We're going to be reviewing all of the new bundles today, talking about the recharge rewards, and there is a lot to talk about recently in Rise of Kingdoms. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We're a sponsored content creator, and oh my goodness, new things have just landed. We're going to figure out if they're any good. In previous videos we did in the last 24 hours, we covered the OV bundle, we covered all the Thanksgiving events, and we even covered the bumper season or bumper harvest super value bundle as well in a very detailed video today. Check that out after you finish out this one. But let's go now and check out the Lu Boo bundle. My initial impression here is I don't like what's happening. It feels expensive to me for what you're getting. In the big picture, I'm paying $20 to unlock the commander. Now, if I can use my universals on this commander, that's actually fine. That's actually totally fine. But it looks like this bundle is limited to one purchase per week with only one price level. That's what it says. So when I buy this, I think it goes away. My bigger problem with this bundle is like, do I need silver keys? No speed ups in here. I, don't, I personally don't need the gold keys. Many people do. Many people need the gold stars. Many people need the gold keys. Many people need the experience. If you need those things, then we're in good shape. The thing I actually like the most about this bundle is the fact that, hey, like there's a pick one resource chest here, but that's enough blabbering. Let's put up the old spend blocker. We're going to go and make this purchase. And like, oh my gosh, we're going to have to take Lubu onto the battlefield and see what his animation looks like. We'll confirm that you can only buy this once. And as we get this purchase to go through, there we are. Purchase is in. Here we go. You're all set. Lubu. Okay, it's sold out. That did count toward our recharge rewards for those of you that are keeping track of that sort of a thing. Recharge rewards is an event where if you spend money and obtain 2,500 raw gems across five different days, so you got to do that five different times on five different days, uh, then you get rewards each day that you do that on. The rewards are really great. You can end up with a total of 30 legendary commander sculptures, and that is tier two, four, and five that offer those rewards. But let's go see now our new commander. Ooh, okay, we need to summon him to see if I can use universals or not. And spoiler alert, am I going to use universals on this commander? I don't plan to, but let's summon him now. Smash the button. There he is. Limited time, Dynasty Warriors 9 crossover. Confirmed. Okay, now skills. Can I use universals? Yes, I can. The powerful Demon God Bundle and Universal Sculptures work here. So this is good for folks that want to invest in him. And there's Writer of History. This is a bundle that I wanted to see proc. This, for five bucks, I want to point this out. I paid 20 bucks for 10 sculptures of Lubu. Now I'm paying five bucks for 10 sculptures of whatever I want. Just saying. The two combined are kind of an interesting idea when it comes to value and rise of kingdoms because now <laughs> i mean i paid 25 bucks for the 10 sculptures that can go anywhere and the 10 sculptures of lubu anyways let's get the old spend blocker up we're going to pick up this bundle writer of history i personally think is really very exceptional however writer of history does not have raw gems in it it's got gem tokens and these gem tokens are not going to count toward the recharge event rewards so we're going to pick that up so Writer of History doesn't go away. And we could use Universals here. I'm not going to. I don't think he's worthy of the Universals personally. The thing I think is most exciting about him is that he has the 50% defense reduction when he's expertised. I feel like he's kind of a cross between a Mehmed and a Hannibal Barca. And neither of those commanders really get a lot of my attention these days. But let's take Lubu out for a spin. See what this animation looks like. We'll get our Lohar as the primary. The Lubu as the secondary, and let's jam, baby. The other commander we need to unlock, by the way, is Diao Chan, and it does look like there are some interesting ways to go and unlock her. There's also Bankrupt the Batik happening right now. That's an event where every time you spend in the courier station, it will discount something else in the same row in the courier station. Is it a good idea to spend gems in the courier station? Absolutely not. 
And maybe if you get some items down to like 80 or 90% off that are like actually pretty legit, you might go for it. Lu Bu is very distinctive here. You can see him with his headdress. Let's get this going. All right, Lu Bu. What does your active skill look like, buddy? What does it look like? What do we got? Here we go. Active skill of Lohar. And? Okay. Pretty sick. I'm going to zoom out so we can see more of it. It looks like the sort of a sword crossing and blasting across. There it is. And then slams down. And the slam down animation goes really far. That's kind of cool. Okay. I like it. Oh my gosh. The slam down animation goes literally twice as far <laughs> as the freaking area of effect. But hey, I like that it looks cool. And I like that, you know, where Lu Bu is going to be every time he's doing that. Let's go and unlock Diao Chan, the Peacekeeper, and see if we can go Expertiser, max it out. Is this a possibility? We'll find out in just a second. Let this combat wrap up. There we go. Cool. Head on, head on home, Lohar. I like that active skill on the Lu Bu, but again, my takeaway from that is that, look, because I can only buy this, looks like once a week, I mean, I don't think I would buy that ever again, I, honestly. Maybe a Mega Spender will buy that, and it looks like it refreshes in five days, 23 hours, six days it will refresh. That's that's probably where I leave that bundle. The one-time purchase, I have them unlocked, and one day if I feel like the Universals belong on him, which I'm not convinced they do belong there right now, then okay, I'll go for it. And maybe a different tier of this bundle will show up some other day, but we do see that this bundle will be going on through the 23rd of January, actually. That's very interesting. So if you can get this bundle once a week, we've got some number of weeks of this left. Let's call it eight. You could get 80 sculptures for like 160 bucks. That, I just, uh, you could do it. If you're a mega spender, you probably will do it because that's what you do. But I'm going to make the argument that this is probably a commander that I'm going to hang back on and not invest in. Again, I think in a younger kingdom, if he's paired with Diao Chan, it could be very good. And speaking of which, here's Diao Chan. $5 to unlock. I mean, I don't really need the stuff that's in here, but for $5, I'll get the instant unlock and get the 10 sculptures. And this also has only one purchase per week tied to it. So we'll get our instant unlock here for five bucks. There is another way to unlock her. Possible I should have just looked to that before doing this. But we're racing to get this video done. So we want to show it to you. Here's the Diao Chan. Okay. She is now unlocked and in our roster. We're going to smash that summon button. There it is. Confirm. Skills. Can I use universals? You betcha we can. Perfect. So we're going to use our universals on this commander. And look, I'm going to... I got 7,000 universals. We will expertise the Diao Chan and kind of see what she can do. I do, however, want to point out that you can unlock Diao Chan in here, the Dynasty Warriors Dance of Friendship. So this is an event. It looks like you can take it up to 10. Complete the specified quest during the event to earn a variety of rewards. Complete a full line of quests to unlock rewards. Unlock all line rewards to claim an Epic Commander Diao Chan. So you can get her for free. You can get more of her sculptures. We need to defeat barbarians and purchase items in the courier station. Minutes of speed ups. Okay, this seems pretty straightforward. Train some uh, T2 units or higher. Barb forts. So you complete all these quests, and it looks like every time you get a quest done, you'll get a star, and you get your stars to 10, and you get the Diao Chan unlock. You have 60 days to get it done. That's actually a very long time. Seems like an extremely achievable way to get some Diao Chan sculptures. I don't think this will reset. If it did reset every day, that would be amazing. But I do not think that that is how that's going to work. So let's go instead and actually just expertise her because we can. So we'll go in, apply some of those 7,000 sculptures, give them something to do. Here we are. Let's uh, just start cranking her up. Finally, a use for my experience tomes. I really have a ton of these. Now, I intend to use Diao Chan as a primary for peacekeeping and level her up a bit because really I've like got all my other peacekeepers max leveled at this point, so I may as well. And let's try a little something here. 
what we can do is get really close to the next level. Okay, put one more star on her, and then use some special stars to get all the skills unlocked. Then we'll max her out. That seems reasonable to me. Okay, there we are. We'll drop a couple of these, a couple of those, one of these. Okay, looks like we got to do a slightly different configuration here. I think this is enough experience to get the job done. Could be that I'm doing this wrong, but uh, let's smash develop and see how it goes. 60% chance. Will we get lucky? We did. All skills unlock, baby. Okay. Now let's go expertise Yao Chan, shall we? Shall we apply those skills? Here we are. 10 sculptures. Confirm it. So we're just going to smash the button <laughs> over and over, maxing out every skill as we go. And if you were doing this normally, you would want to max the first skill before you proceed. That is always the case with pretty much every commander in the game, with the exception of a few gathering commanders. And you, if you want to battle barbarians with her, would want to max that second skill. Because she takes universals, it's honestly very easy to work on her and to start to level her up, or rather skill her up, which is fantastic news. So everybody who wants this commander, once they've unlocked her with the quests, which is a 100% free-to-play way to go, then you'll be in good shape. And you can do that, and you can expertise her. And she does have the highest single target damage of any epic, which again, I'm really eager to see how that actually plays out. So we've nearly got this commander expertise at this point. Sculptures on sculptures to get the job done. I do like that the third skill gives stats for all troop types, which is really very versatile. It's very good in the early game as well in Rise of Kingdoms. Many commanders make you focus on one specific type of troop, but in the very early game, you just don't have only one troop type to commit. Here we are. Xiao Chan, upgrade. There it is. And let's expertise this epic commander. Boom. Expertise attained. Chain stratagems. For the next four seconds, attacks have a 100% chance to deal 400 damage factor to the target. So now... Let's go take Diao Chan for a spin. We'll get our Lohar. We'll get our Diao Chan. And I will eventually make her a primary commander for peacekeeping because we're going to use her to battle those barbs. There it is. Clear out the troops. We'll bring some T5 calves, a smallish amount of them. Okay, we've made it to the barb. And by the way, if you're looking for a full Diao Chan guide, we did make a guide for that commander with the best talents that we think are available as well. Of a card up in the top for that video, which you can watch after this one. Let's go and see what Diao Chan does for us here. All right, active skill of Lohar and Ribbons. Dude, look at the damage there. That was so much damage. And look, I'm bringing a small march to battle that with. A very small march. That does look really cool, too. That does look really cool. Let's go take out. These barbs as well. Man, that looks pretty sweet. Also, I'm pretty sure I just sent my gatherers. Yep, that, that happened. So what am I thinking is the future for Diao Chan? Huge single target damage. That's good in a number of places. That includes battling barbs, barbarian forts especially. You can use her in the open field. You do need to have lots of march speed or ability to slow the enemy to pull that off. You'd want to pair her with commanders that are more fast moving so that you can make sure you stay next to your target. Because her biggest downfall is that when you're actually battling against a player, they will just walk away from you. And Diao Chan does damage over four seconds. You got to be in contact with the enemy. She's like a mini Frederick the First. All right, here we go. Let's scope that out again. This thing is getting just shredded. Here we go. Ribbon's time, baby. Watch the damage. One, two, three, four. Huge damage. Amazing. I, I like this a lot. This is very good. I think she's going to be a fantastic epic. I think people are going to really enjoy using her. I think she's going to bring a lot of versatility to people's rosters. I think she can be paired with so many commanders that it's fantastic. Animation is really great. Is she the kind of player or is she the kind of commander that you bring to like a big brawl in Ark of Osiris? I mean, in the early game you could, but she's not doing area of effect damage. She doesn't bring march speed. I don't think that's what she's really designed for. She's designed for sort of surgical precision, single target, big damage. One, two, three, four. I love that flurry at the end there. 
really nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm very optimistic about this commander as an epic. Looking really quite fantastic. Not the same sort of utility as like a Belisarius, which will always and forever kind of be good as a cavalry commander that's fast moving and can dash away with the Ark of Osiris. But she is just strong, solid damage, which I think people are really going to enjoy. The next bundle we need to go and get a look at is the Heartwarming Thanksgiving Gratitude and Togetherness Bundle. This style of bundle is important if you are trying to finish up your turkey. The turkey is the best free-to-play event by far in the game. And okay, there are different versions of this turkey event. We've seen this style of event before. In fact, we've seen this exact turkey before. You go in, you get corn, you power them up by feeding them the corn, and you spend extra gems to unlock a higher tier, and you get literally, I think, all your gems back when you complete the highest tier of this, which is pretty freaking spectacular. So this is just a check to see like, hey, did you save gems? Are you gem bankrupt? And if you are, go farm gems on the map using my guide on how to go do that. Farming at least a thousand gems a day, you could do much more really. So if we look in at this bundle, we need to start to purchase this. I'm gonna go purchase the five to $50 tiers, and then we can look together at what we got. Okay, my friends, we went in and we purchased all of the bundles. Here is what we're looking at. At the $5 tier, one gold key and some speed ups. You also get a cosmetic. $10, you get another cosmetic and a few more gold keys. Speed ups are universal. And continuing on, gold keys, corn, speed ups, resources, $50 bundle, corn, eight gold keys, speed ups, resources. My friends, this bundle is actually identical. I gotta go confirm this, but I believe this bundle is fully identical to the OV bundle, except in the heartwarming Thanksgiving bundle, you're getting corn, and in the OV bundle, you are instead going to be getting stars. So if you are already done with your Thanksgiving turkey and you've got more than enough corn, you don't need to worry about completing the heartwarming Thanksgiving bundle. You technically can go and get 100% of that free to play. That means that, again, I'm shooting from the hip a little bit here because it looks like the volume of speed ups is identical to the OV bundle, but it looks like you would get a 100% identical amount of speed ups to the OV bundle. And I'll put up onto the screen the actual math with an arrow pointing to the two bundles side by side so you can see for a fact whether or not they are identical. I'll do that math later. But the big picture takeaway from that is that the OV and V636 bundle, the Ark of Osiris Season Champions, congratulations to both of you again. This bundle, if you need the stars, is better, and the other bundle is better if you need the corn, and many people will need the corn in order to finish this freaking amazing event right over here, feeding this freaking bird. This is far and away one of the most important events in the game because of the value it delivers specifically to free-to-play players as we stuff this bird full of corn. You can see just with the purchase we've made, you get pretty far here. And I do want to call attention to the fact that like, hey, you should be spreading your purchasing out over the course of many days to take advantage of the recharge rewards. If you are doing the recharge rewards at all, you want to do that really in like the smallest amount of spending possible to unlock each tier. And I, again, really solidly and clearly want to give the advice that, look, I'm no financial advisor, but your financial priority should be your family and saving for retirement and, heck, like making sure you have an emergency fund. Your bills are all paid off. Do, do, do not go into credit card debt playing Rise of Kingdoms. It is not worth it. And if you're in credit credit card debt, you should not be spending in mobile games, in my opinion, I'm no financial advisor. That's my advice, okay? But if you are spending, the amount you want to spend is the least amount possible to unlock each of those tiers. Now, we're going to be looking at you used a corn for the next 20 minutes or whatever. For those of you interested in Bankrupt the Boutique, I can very quickly show you how this works. When you purchase one item in the row, it discounts something else in the row. So I might spend 16 gems, which is a very small number of gems, to try to discount something else I really wanted. I landed on the research speedups, which I'm not going to buy. Instead, I'm just going to, I think, go ahead and outright purchase the speedups for resources. Cruising down through the list, there's actually nothing else here I want, so I'm going to use my free refresh. In this case, 
Like, yeah, I could purchase the 90% off gold and hope that it lands on the stone, but I'm just going to buy the stone and move on with life and not spend on anything else in that row. I look at what's in here and I see nothing that I need. I look down to the next row. Wow, this is a perfect example of why I generally don't spend any gems in this merchant. I suppose if I needed a one-day peace shield, that's actually a really tempting price for a one-day peace shield. You might be able to get it cheaper, but that's the sort of thing where like maybe I'd go for that. In fact, I don't know. Do I have enough peace shields? Do I? I got six of them. I'm probably fine. So you can see the bankrupt the boutique is a cute idea for an event. But I think the discount will be need, like need to be much steeper in order to really be crazy effective. And you certainly don't see me going to push that hundred gem refresh. Like, yeah, there's some incremental extra value. Is it worth going out of your way to spend on, especially your gems? No, nah, I don't think so. I think this is all pretty exciting. Diao Chan, I'm really looking forward to as a new contender in Rise of Kingdoms. Lu Bu, I'm cautiously optimistic that the debuff he offers is going to be amazing. 50% defense is huge. That is a massive amount of defense reduction. But the rest of his kit, because he's so focused on hitting cities instead of garrisons, leaves me feeling like I'm not going to go work on him. I've got some better options in an older kingdom. If you're in a younger kingdom and you're overflowing with sculptures, you want a commander that's going to have a cross between like a Hannibal Barca and also the Mehmed. You're looking for that crossover. That's what this commander, Lu Bu, represents. And I think he is very solid in that regard if you are looking for a commander to go and hit cities specifically. Of course, there are a lot of commanders that are good for hitting cities. And if you're low on sculptures, you may as well go in on a commander that's good for hitting cities and good for other stuff too. For instance, Saladin. Great for hitting cities, good for other stuff too. Just one example. As far as the bundles go... My recommendation is that if you need stars, go with the Congratulations OV bundle. If you're not feeling up to the grind of actually completing the heartwarming Thanksgiving corn by doing the different things that get you corn, hey, just purchase the bundle. That's a fine choice if you are spending. Otherwise, as you recall from my video earlier today, a really great way to go and complete this is to go to Zone 1, farm low-level resource nodes. You got to watch it actively all day and you're constantly sending your gatherers out. You'll very quickly, when you complete resource nodes, accumulate just ridiculous amounts of corn as you go. And that will come in the form of presents, which, uh, wow, we haven't accumulated any of those yet because we haven't claimed them from our system messages. Okay, there's the Thanksgiving box. You open these up, you get corn, right? Then you stuff the bird. If you're looking for more information about these commanders, all cards up in the top or just hit the info button and you can make your way to my other guides. If you're looking for events about Thanksgiving, all of that's in there too. Farming gems, the additional resources you need are in that info section and in the links in the description. So check all that stuff out to get everything you want and need. Consider subscribing as well. Supports the channel. Throw a like on the video. It means a lot to me. Free to you. And let me know down below in the comments. What do you think of these commanders? What do you think of these bundles? And until next time, my friends... You have fun smashing the kingdom.